Private carryover gives River Murray irrigators more flexibility in how they manage their water for their business and helps them better prepare for the year ahead when it is likely to be dry. It's a form of insurance that is available to boost allocations in dry years, allowing eligible users to carry over unused water from one year to the next, up to a maximum limit of 20% of their entitlement, securing a greater amount of water for the first part of the irrigation season, even though some carryover allocation may be lost if allocations reach more than 80% for the year. Private carryover will be available in 2019 to 2020. So, how do you know if you're eligible? There are three steps. First, you need to hold a water access entitlement for Class 3. Second, you need to have an unused volume left on your water account on the 30th of June. And third, you need to make sure you submit your water meter reading to the Department of Environment and Water by the 31st of July. If you are a member of an irrigation trust, the trust will do this for you. In years that private carryover is available, we need to take a few things into account before we can tell you exactly how much water you'll be able to carry over. We need to consider the volume of unused water in your account at the end of the water year and the total amount of water that is available for private carryover. We also need to consider improvements in how much water is available for allocation during the water year because if conditions improve and allocations increase, total allocations, including carryover, cannot exceed 100%. So what does this all mean in reality? Let's look at a couple of examples. Irrigators A, B, C and D hold 100 megalitres of Class 3 water access entitlements and submitted their water metre reading before the 31st of July. In the following examples, minimum opening allocations are announced in April at 45%, so each irrigator will have at least 45 megalitres of allocation in the following year, and private carryover will be available. Irrigator A used all of their 100 megalitres allocation, so they're not eligible for carryover. Therefore, the total volume available to them is 45 megalitres. Irrigator B used 90 megalitres, so they had 10 megalitres of underuse. This is only 10% of their entitlement, well under the maximum of 20%, so they are eligible to carry over the full 10 megalitres. Therefore, the volume available to them is 45 megalitres of allocation against their entitlement, plus 10 megalitres of carryover, which equals 55 megalitres. Irrigator C used 80 megalitres, so they had 20 megalitres of underuse. This is 20% of their entitlement, so they are eligible to carry the full 20 megalitres. Therefore, the volume available to them is 45 megalitres of allocation against their entitlement, plus 20 megalitres of carryover, which equals 65 megalitres. Irrigator D used 50 megalitres. The maximum carryover is 20%. So even though they had 50 megalitres of underuse, they are only eligible to carry over 20 megalitres. Therefore, the volume available to them is 45 megalitres of allocation against their entitlement, plus 20 megalitres carryover, which equals 65 megalitres. Once we know how much carryover people are eligible for, we then need to compare this volume to the amount of water available for carryover. There is more than enough water available to meet all potential eligible carryover demands in 2019 to 2020. During the year, if the total amount of water available for allocation improves, individual irrigators' allocations will increase. In our example, if water allocations increase from 45% to 85% during the water year, irrigator A is not eligible for carryover the volume available to them would increase to 85 megalitres. The volume available to irrigator B would increase to 85 megalitres of allocation against their entitlement, plus 10 megalitres of carryover, which equals 95 megalitres. Because irrigator C's total allocation cannot exceed 100%, the volume available to them would increase to 85 megalitres of allocation against their entitlement plus 15 megalitres of carryover, 
which equals 100%. They would lose 5 megalitres of carryover. Again, irrigated D's total allocation cannot exceed 100%. The volume available to them would then increase to 85 megalitres of allocation against their entitlement, plus 15 megalitres of carryover, which equals 100% they would lose 5 megalitres of carryover. If you are eligible for private carryover and your meter readings are submitted by the 31st of July, your carryover will automatically be credited to your water account. You do not need to apply and there are no fees. Once the carryover allocation is on your water account, the volume is available for use or trade and must be used in the water year it is provided. Just remember that any trade out of your account is considered when determining your maximum allocation and that your total allocation including carryover cannot exceed 100%. Following the minimum opening water allocation announcement in April, you will need to decide whether saving water to carryover for use in the next water year is the best option for you or if other options may be better. There are an increasing number of products available to help manage business risk during dry times, including leases and forwards, as well as carryover interstate. You can also trade an additional water to generate an unused volume on your water account to carry over. The Department for Environment and Water will provide regular information about how likely allocations are to increase to help your decisions. It is recommended that you seek a range of advice from your Irrigation Trust, Industry Association or Water Broker to decide the best option for you. For more information about private carryover, contact the Department for Environment and Water at www.environment.sa.gov.au.